Well, it's Thursday, and you all know what that means. That means, once again, as you know, TNA are in their go-home show before the following day for Against All Odds in Chicago. But, we are going to see certain things that are going to take place prior before that. But, as you know, the system makes their way to the infamous Hardy Compound. I wonder what the uh, has in store for them. And then, of course, we move on with Ring of Honor, what we have two proven ground matches for the tag team titles and the women's world television title and we have a four corner survival uh eight uh trios match which is gonna be very interesting as well but first things first we have stardom with their much recent event from this past sunday in toyama this is of course preludes before the upcoming event on june 22nd so we're going to see some interesting developments as well on that one. And then, of course, we cap up this episode with some news updates to give you guys updates what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set, and developments that are happening in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed ASAP right now. So let's get started with another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome to Deleted WrestleZone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada. Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics, such as the wrestlers themselves, the promotions, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also do real timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something has happened in the world of pro wrestling that needs to be addressed. ASAP. We also do do Nike Sayaka Watch and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. So click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool wrestling content as well. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, all introductions are set aside. It's hammer time. So, let's begin with our very first review, and this one is from Stardom. Okay, so today should be already June 14th, yep, and Stardom just had their show this past Sunday in Toyama. Now, as you know, they're working up their uh, their time to get to, of course, June 22nd for the conversion and plenty other events as well, such as the New Blood Show and all this and that. Now, our first match, we have Sayaka Kurara taking on Hana. Now, keep in mind, Sayaka and her tag partner, also a member of the Cosmic Angels, Aya Sakura, will be facing against Wingori for a shot of the New Blood tag team belts. Now, this was an opportunity that was handed to them. Uh, but, however, you ask yourself, how good are they? I mean, look, we have seen Sayaka Kurara. She has, ama- uh, she is growing significantly. She has very, been very impressive. But the one thing that has always been impressed by us is her spears, where they were so flawless. You wouldn't imagine the kind of things she would do, but she gets it done. But, unfortunately, because Hanan has more experience than her, uh, she put her away with the Hanan special. And now their tag partners are, in fact, take the next match. We have Aya Sakura versus Saya Ida. Now, Aya Sakura, I don't know if it was smart 
or act of desperation or just trying to make sure she could try to pick up a win. I don't know. She immediately made a beeline towards Aya, towards Ida the moment they were introducing her in the ring announcement. But, however, you know that she has great stri uh, um, striking capability when it comes to her kicks. I mean, you've seen what she could do. I mean, she's dubbed as the karate girl. It makes a lot of sense. But with Saya Ida, you know Ida. Don't be fooled by her size, but she's strong as hell. I think that's something I'm not sure if uh, Sakura has to take into account. But unfortunately, much like her tag partner, Kurada, apparently she did not pick up the win. She ended up in a single leg crab hold. But as soon as the match was over, both sides, as you know, they had, had a, there was a promo that were thrown. I don't know what that meant. But during a post-match comment, I remember um, um, Kurada felt that they were handed this opportunity for these tag belts out of pity. And she feels that that's what it's been like. But, however, she's not going to let this opportunity slip out of her fingers. So, she made it a perfect clear. And so did um, Sakura that they are going to practice, try to work more on their cohesion. And I think that's important. So, they have less than and maybe right now, after, as we speak, a week or so away in order to get everything done. So, we'll see where that leads us. Now, our next match, we have a four-way match. We have the rookie Rian versus Momokoko of Stars uh, versus Mei Seda versus Mina Shirakawa of EXV. Now, of course, there's a lot of factors in this. Anybody could win this match. Now, I feel like the stronger two individuals in this match that could win is either Mei Seda or Mina Shirakawa. So, basically, that was pretty much what it was going on. But, however... It was Mina who picked up the win with the implanted DDT onto, uh, onto Rian, and just like that, she won. Now, our next match, we have a uh, tag team action. We have Miyu Amasaki and Lady C of Queen's Quest taking on God's Eye members, uh, Konami and Shuri. Now, of course, this was going to be a very interesting match because, as you know, when it comes to Konami and Sudi, boy, they are an unstoppable force. You don't want to be in their crosshairs, but that's exactly what they do. However, I think they should have been known that, uh, what's her name? Konami was going to be the one to put you in a submission. She applied the Triangle Lancer onto Amasaki, forcing her to tap out. And just like that, they picked up the win. Now, our... Uh, our next match, we got the other members of God's Eye, consistent of Rana Yagami, Saki Kashima, and Ami Suri. Now, uh, nothing too significant about this match, but however, they do face Cosmic Angels, consistent of Yuna Mizumori, Natsupo, and Tam Nakano. Now, please note, Saori Ono is not involved in this event. Uh, if you guys must know where she is. Well, she was at Oz Academy and then made a beeline to Sandai Girl. So that's where she was. But however, no, nothing too significant about this match. But however, um, you can tell that Rana Yagami took out, tried to take on Tam. Now, don't forget, Tam does have a bit of a martial arts background. Uh, if you notice her style, she does have a bit of the Kung Fu way. And of course, you know uh, that Yagami has a bit of the... Martial arts style. I mean, she does have some striking, uh, kicking strikes capability, but unfortunately, it did not do any well for her because it was Tam Nakano with the running knee onto her, and just like that, it was completely over. Now, our next match, ahead of their final chapter match, as they call it, Oedo Tai, consistent of Tekla, Momo Wananabe, and Natsuko Tora, they face against Starlight Kid and the members of Queen's Quest, consistent of. Azumi and Saya Kamitani. Now, of course, it's interesting that kids involved in this match. Don't forget, she was expelled from Oedo Tai back in April. But, of course, nothing too significant meant a lot for this one. But you would think that Oedo Tai would try to build up the momentum to prove them wrong once again. As you know, Natsuko Tora has a problem with Kamitani. Doors to her interference trying to believe that she can get Momo Wananabe to leave. Oedo Tai, but in the end, it was Azumi, Azumi with the Azumi Sushi onto Tekla to pick up the win. However, the Oedo Tai decided to give a little beatdown to everyone. But of course, 
I don't know if Kamitani realized what she got herself into. I don't think she had any idea that this was going to be tough. Not to mention they are telling her that this will be all her fault. I don't know if she's starting to believe it's true or she just thinks there is a bit of hope that something can turn around from this. I don't know. But we will see. Now our main event, we have stars consistent of Koguma, Azuki, and Mayu Iwatani taking on EXV members Hanako, Zina, and Micah. Now, as you know recently, Mina, uh, Zina and Micah are going to be facing each other at the conversions for the red belt. But for today, they of course will be tagging along to take on stars. But one thing that was funny is, of course, is Koguma with her usual tricks. She actually played uh, Micah, say she heard her and everybody were booing her and all that. But it was all a ploy. Of course, it was going to be like that. But not, nonetheless, uh, of course, stars shown how they are the number one baby faces in stardom were able to pick up the win all thanks to the icon Mayu with the moonsault. Uh, on Hanako and just like that it was over but I don't know how this thing with Xena and Michael will be affecting them but we know that those two will be facing head to head at the conversion but as for of course uh, the winners you know Mayu Iwatani will defend the belt on the 23rd and Ice Ribbon and Cork and Hall soon and then of course Koguma and Azuki will be defending their belts at conversion against their own teammates Wingori. So basically the, the show ends with stars and that's uh that's all folks. <laughs> Just like that. So I think we're done with stardom. I think it's time to move on with TNA. Okay. Well, TNA, this is their go-home show before we head to, of course, Against Our Lives in Chicago. Now, you know what? Let's just get this one out of the way The <laughs> in the Hardy compound. As you know, Matt Hardy invited the system into the Hardy compound. However, Myers, Edwards, Alicia were not too keen on the idea because they know what ha what happens in the Hardy compound, and it's not a very pleasant thing. Now, of course, Matt Hardy greeted the system until Moose decided to step on a booby trap, or as Matt Hardy calls it, a trap booby or something like that. And everybody had to deal with their own thing. Uh, we did see Myers uh, going into some room, and then, of course, he actually uh, found some action figures. As you all know, he collects action figures. And then he runs into King Maxell, the eldest son of Matt Hardy. And then, of course, he took him out in the middle of the ring and just like that. He... But, however, he did have help from a skeleton of Edge. And then you hear the song, "You To me, you will always be Edge's bitch. <laughs> that is very funny. Now, as for Eddie Edwards, well, he was roaming around the woods. He runs into Wolfgang, and he tells him that he is the American Wolf. And, of course, he tells him that he's done that. But, however, he told him to look behind him, and he sees the moon, and that's when he transformed into a wolf. And, of course, you see Wolfgang doing the wolf howl. Now, as for Alicia, she runs into Re um, Rebecca, Matt Hardy's wife, and the gothic baby herself. Looking for, of course, the system. So she was so concerned. However, we did see, of course, the gothic baby use her power. And then Reba decided to, of Rebby. And, of course, she used, of course, the, the guillotine to cut her head. And then that's when you hear her stop st speaking. And then we see Moose was being led by Bartholomew to uh, find his dad. And that's when they've run into each other. And then, of course, he went into the lake of incarnation or so and he came back as a football player and then everybody just woke up out of his age like i just got my head chopped off you know that sort of thing and, and of course moose made it clear that he's going to end them well let's see what happens because as you know everybody had a lot of fun at the hardy compound <laughs> so now let's just go from how the, the first match of the time so we got that out of the way 
Uh, we did see Zachary Wentz versus Mike Santana. Now, don't forget, Zach and Miguel got in the way in trying to ruin the party between both Mike Santana and, of course, Steve Macklin. But, however, you know Miguel was going to get involved in this one regardless. But Macklin took care of the problem by taking out Miguel. And then, of course, uh, Santana took out uh, Zach with a lariat in the midair. And just like that, it was over. But, of course, we know that Macklin and Santana will deal with the Rascals and then finish off what they started. Now, we do see, of course, an interview with Tom talking about Mustafa Ali, about this whole trust Ali. But, of course, Mustafa Ali refused to accept the fact that he cheats. He thinks that what he does is what's best. But, we all know that's not. He just acts that way. Now, we do... Uh, now, during exclusive content, there's been talk about what's been going on. As you know, Masha Slavich cashed in her um, her opportunity for the TNA Knockouts tag team titles. While, uh, of course, Alicia said that she needs a belt to prove the system is uh, at the top of the food chain. However, right now, Masha has a lot of things that she's been trying to deal with. But, of course, Alicia is ignoring the fact. However... Uh, she they, she was being not harassed, but more like showing that the Hex are proving their point that they're not a, really a tag team. But however, uh, they do set up a match between Marty Bell and Masha Slavich. Now, of course, Allison K was going to get involved in this match regardless. But of course, Masha took care of it. But because of that, Marty Bell applied a schoolboy with the assist of Allison K to pick up the win. So right now, the obvious question is this. Even though Alicia thinks that everything will be fine, she's ignoring the fact she's tag teamed with Masha. But we'll see where that leads us from here and out. Now, as you know, Steph the Landers has been getting a little love letters and flowers and gifts by none of the PCO. And of course, Zaya Brooks, who's a big fan of love, was trying to cheer her on. But of course, those idiots. The first class decided to steal that rose that PCO gave to Steph the Landers. Now, while that was happening, of course, AJ Francis and Rich Swan ended up going to the uh, to the stage to explain their actions, and then PCO, of well, the actions of winning the t uh, the digital media title that was one of the the topics of discussion from then on, but. PCO actually showed up to take matters in their own hands and reclaim the property that was taken by, of course, AJ Francis from, uh, of course, uh, to Steph the Lander. So I wouldn't be surprised if the match between those two will take place. Now, our next match, we have Tasha Steeles taking on, of course, Danny Luna. Now, don't forget, Danny Luna and... Um, Jody Thread do have a an opportunity to uh, for a rematch clause for the tag belts, but however, they need to get themselves back into uh, sharpening themselves, get ready for the next opportunity. So, as you know, Tasha Steele's defeated Jody Thread. Now is Danny Luna. However, Danny Luna did pretty well on this match, but she put the Luna landing on her, and just like that, it was over. Now. Gia Miller conducts an interview with Joe Hendry, as you know. Um, well, Joe Hendry is willing to admit that the system beat him down last week. But he did say that he has someone who is going to help him to reach to uh, the top by breaking the glass ceiling. And that person is someone you guys know. And you know him too because he was someone that is familiarized with someone from Chicago. And that is a steal. So he said that he see potential in him. But the so-called king shows up um frank gazarian thinks that he can basically says what he wants tell him that he likes to ruin people's thunders but however a steel made it clear how about you two face each other at uh, against a lot so looks like it's gonna happen now we do see jada stone taking on um ash by elegance as you know ash by elegance uh, we haven't seen her since she appeared at the battle, at uh, battleground. Uh, you can tell this was an easy match and all that. But the strange thing is that happened is we did see Rosemary. She was watching. We don't know what's the significance 
of the whole thing. But uh, I don't know if Ash by Elegance was noticing it. But she did pick up the win when she applied, of course, the Swanton Bomb and it was over. Now we did see a bit of a vignette, uh, a video package from Jonathan Gresham. Of course, as you know, uh, Sammy Callahan called him out and they want to have this match against Alad. So we could see that happening at some point. But at this point, we'll just have to, we're, we'll see what's going to happen against Alad. Now, of course, Jody, uh, no, um, Jordan Oliver, uh, Jordan Grace, as you know, did not walk away with, as double champion at Battleground. But however, she felt that she made uh, made a name in and in, in one of the most biggest companies in the entire world, which is WWE. So that would be something that mattered to her even if she didn't win it at least people will know who she is and of course it would draw attention to tna so that is something we could expect now our main event we have is the abc versus the the menet brothers or i like to call them the menet boys so it's the first time we see both nick and his younger brother ryan team up i mean we don't get to see these two team up at all So, so how do you think they'll do? I have to say, the thing is this. We know that in the factors of this match, ABC has the much better co cohesion. The brothers, well, I'm not going to take anything with, from them, but individually they have their own flavor. But how will their team work? I have to say they did pretty well. Uh, but it was Menace with the danger zone on Ace to pick up the win. But my thought about this match, we know that, a that ABC has been... Not really getting their their groove on. There are talks from certain people that I've been seeing on social media talking about the possibility that one will turn the other. So that is something we could expect down the road. But we just got to wait and see until then. But for right now, I think we are done with TNA. Let's move on with Ring of Honor. Okay, Ring of Honor, our opening match is a proving ground match for the ROH Women's World Television title. Billy Starks takes on uh, Sandra Moon, so you guys may have seen her. She, We normally see her at West Coast Pro, but of course in this match you would think uh, that Billy Starks had the edge, but no, you see the strength and resilience with Sandra Moon, but unfortunately... This match ended with, of course, instead of Billy Starks applying her infamous Swanton Bomb, she decided, you know, just to play games and use a submission onto that to pick up the win. So that's how she decides to play her, her game. Now, our next match, we have Nick Camarado and Jacoby Watts taking on um, Shane Taylor's promotion, Lee Moriarty and Shane Taylor. Well... Nonetheless, this match was going to end up exactly what I thought because uh, Camarado got fists in the face by uh, Taylor and just like that, it was completely over. Now, Taya Valkyrie, as you know, seems that she has some unfinished business with the Queen herself. We're talking about, of course, um, Queen Aminata. So she thinks that she's nothing but a phony because the last time these two tangoed, was when, of course, she beat her at the uh, tournament for the ROH Women's World Television title. So that is the probably main reason. But we'll see what happens when they confront each other uh, at some point down the road. It's not on this one anyway, but we'll see. Now, stirring the whole thing up, coming out of your mama's kitchen, Red Velvet, take on Viva Van. Yeah, so we've been seeing more often Viva... We've, we've been seeing Van more often in Ring of Honor and in AEW. But it's great to see her. But, of course, this is like a bit of a, a warm-up for Red Velvet. As you know, she has the ROH World Television title on site. So she decided to finish off the Van Van with the high-flying spinning kick, front kick. And just like that, it was over. Now we have our four-corner survival uh, match in the trio's way. Team number one, we have Lance Archer and, of course, with the Righteous, Dutch, and Vincent. Then we have Top Flight and Action Andretti. 
Then we got the Dark Order members, and then the infantry along with boys. That's right, we saw. It was interesting to see Dalton Castle team up with the infantry. I never would have imagined that that was going to take place, but it did. I was so happy. But unfortunately, this match, uh, we've been seeing how great Top Flight and Action and Dreddy are. And they were able to pick up the win on on the Dark Order when Darius pinned Alex Reynolds and just like that. So in my mind, there is the possibilities they could challenge for the Unified Trios belt. So that's going to be down the line somewhere in the future. Now our next match, we have a Trios match in, in the women's division. We have Diamante, The Problem, Marina Shafir, and, of course, Alex Windsor. They take on Lady Frost, uh, Layla Hirsch, and Abaddon. So, you would think this is going to be a very interesting match. But, I wasn't too sure because we have some great co uh, competitors on both sides. But, it was Alex Windsor that made the big win on this one when she defeated Layla Hirsch with a some sort of a slam. And, just like that, it was over. And then, of course, we move on with Harley Cameron versus Trish Adora. Um, not much. We, we, have, we haven't seen much of Harley Cameron wrestling. I mean, we've been seeing her. She's been chatting with Zarea, but she was able to pick up the win on Trish Adora with a PK. And just like that, it was completely over. Now, our main event is another Proving Ground match for the World Tag Team Tiles. We have the United, the Undisputed kingdom consistent of mike bennett and matt taven taking on uh chi cabrera and the bad dude tito now you know that cabrera and tito are two of the strongest people they've been tag teaming for almost 11 years so that's a great accomplishment but how will they master it against of course guys like bennett and taven well they were able to pick up the win themselves when the hell mary was applied onto um onto chi by uh chape onto uh um, to Bennett, and just like that, they picked up the win. So I think that's pretty much it right now with Ring of Honor. So I think we are done with all the reviews. So let's move on with some news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So let's begin with updates with the promotions on their upcoming events. Uh, let's begin with GCW stuff since we got all of that all in one big load from there. Uh, as you know, on the 29th of June, they will be in Houston. What, 29th? Yeah. Oh, no, 28th. On the 28th, they will be in Houston uh, for no sleep. Uh, it was later told that the Los Desperados, consisting of Aries and Gringo Loco, will be in action to take on Alec Price and Corradoc, better known as the Garbage Daddies. And then, of course, on July 5th, GCW makes their way up north to Toronto for worse behavior. Mike Bailey, who is a fellow Canadian native over there in the area, takes on Carrie Morton. Then later on in July 18th in Louisville, the JCW Championship, not GCW, JCW as in Jersey Championship Wrestling title, Masha Snavich defends the belt against the person she defeated for that belt. So basically you can call it a rematch. So that person is Jordan Oliver. And then of course the next day they make their way to St. Louis for So High on the 19th of July. We have Bussy! Taking on, of course, the Rejects, Bet, uh, Bet, uh, Reed Bentley, and, of course, the Duke of Hardcore, John Wayne Murdoch. Now, of course, finally, we have on the 20th of July in Indianapolis, Nate Webb will be in action to take on Broski Jimmy. Now, you may or may not have heard this already. Uh, it was told that, in for uh, I believe, for this coming AEW collision, uh, we have the debut of... MXM, MXM, uh, Mansoor, and of course, Mason Madden. You may know him as Mace back in WWE, so they'll be making their debut. Now, it's still unclear whether they will be signed or not. That is something we don't know. We know we have been seeing wrestlers formerly from WWE making their appearance and all that, 
but we will see what happens until then. Now, as I always talk about this channel that I always talk about various promotions, well, this one was an interesting one. Um, you may have heard of this promotion I mentioned as part of the alliance uh, with New Japan and Stardom and other promotions from China, Singapore, Taiwan, uh, Thailand. Well, apparently one of these promotions called Grapple Max uh, will be having their upcoming show by the end near the end of this month on the 29th of June called Dual Destiny and they it's going to be a uh, maybe a two night show up from my understanding and of course they're going to have a tag team title tournament they already announced one of those matches um the best bros will be participating in that that's right Ch Choco Pro slash Chikatu Moves very own and one of my personal favorite ones from that promotion Best Bros, Mei Shuga, and Baliraki make their way to Singapore. They take on a guy, a group of tag team known as Ships Ahoy. Yeah, feels like a pirate thing. Uh, there's Sarah Coldheart and Christian. Now, I don't know much about these guys, but I'm looking forward to see what they can do. Hopefully, I find a way to see it. Now, uh, Japanese promotion, PPP Tokyo, will have another event coming up next month called the Vanquish Heaven Feast in the Sky. Now, this event will take place on the 9th of July uh, in Shinjuku Face. Now, certain matches have been announced. Uh, we have Zones and Chanyota. They'll be facing against Ayami Sazumura uh, from, of course, 2AW. And they team up with Yuna Manase. Uh, then we have a six-woman tag match. Uh, we have... Marika Kobashi, Drag K, and Ryu Mizunami taking on Makoto, uh, Riara, and uh, Natsu Surime. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, we do have Joji Oton Otoni. He'll take on against uh, Zoe Daimonji. And then finally we got uh, Kentaro Hashizu teaming up with Masato Tanaka. They take on Shuji Ishikawa and of course the boss of PP Tokyo, Kabuto Mitomi. Now, an interesting development has happened for Prestige Wrestling. In the last event, uh, Alan Angels was was defending the belt, his Prestige Championship, against his former teammate and friend, Evil Uno. But apparently, there was a problem leading to his friends, Saints and Sinners, getting involved. However, they, there was going to be a bit of a rematch for this. However, uh, it was decided that if Saints and Sinners get involved in this match... Well, uh, Alan Angels may have to, will lose the belt. So I think this is the last thing he wants, but we'll see what happens from here now. Now, Kitsun Women's Wrestling for their upcoming Shugo event. Uh, we do have, of course, uh, this will be on the 17th, oh no, the 14th of July in LA. They announced for Miko Alana making her debut. Now, Miko Alana is another wrestler who's going to be debuting as well in um, West Coast Pro at the upcoming Invitational event for the uh, Dennis Richmond. So, yes, she along with Mainly will also be making their debuts as well. Now, uh, Sendai Girls have mentioned that their upcoming event in um, on July 15th. Uh, in Cork and Hall, uh, we have the hardcore queen herself, Dash Shizako. She'll take on against Stardom's very own and a member of Oedo Tai, Momo Wananabe. This is going to be a very interesting match to watch. Now, for the upcoming uh, collaboration between West Coast Pro, Deadlock Pro Wrestling, and Prestige, for the Untouchable event on July 20th, uh, Gia Jewel will be making his appearance. And then finally, as you know, we have the Queen of Indies taking place on August 17th. Three names have been mentioned will be participating. We have Masha Slamovich, Lady Apache, and of course, um, Sandra Moon. So I'm sure there'll be more names that we mentioned, but we'll see what happens until then. Now for some interesting developments that have been... Um, then I that caught my attention, I think many of you may find. Now, as you know, recently, a lot of you, if you guys are... WWE fans are looking forward to seeing WWE making alliances with other promotions. Well, you may know that one of them will probably be Mighty Gold. Well, apparently, uh, NXT star uh, Carmen Petrovic uh, uh, expresses interest 
and wrestling in Mighty Gold. So I think this would be a good op opportunity for it, but the real question is, when will that happen? I'm sure they're trying to work out a, the agreements of their partnership. That would take time, but I'm sure there are some wrestlers that will be that would love to be part of that, but we'll just wait and see. Now, as you all know, with Scott Demore after he got fired from T, uh, from TNA, uh, we did hear Will Ospreay talked about that uh, AEW should hire him and uh, put him run ROH. You know, I mean, which is not a bad idea, to be honest. And of course, we I just put on the last episode on the news updates that he is currently uh, won't be able to work with any promotion until February of 2025 due to the non-compete clause. But Diana Perrazzo spoke to Fightful Select and said that he would be a he could be a potential, uh, you know, how does what was it? Uh, you know, would be a potential uh, that would be benefit for AEW and, and Ring of Honor. Which, of course, you'd be a fool not to think of that. But I'm sure right now uh, we just gotta wait until everything's cleared up. Now, Fightful Selects also reports, as you know, we did see Matt Hardy uh, been appearing in TNA. Well, now, as you know, uh, his brother Jeff, he is now a free agent. Well, he's going to be one real soon. So that pretty much is what's happening. Now, there's talk from people they think that he will make his way to TNA. That is something we don't know just yet, but we will see when that happens. Now, as you know, I mentioned also on a previous news update with the, on the last episode, uh, the talk about the, about uh, the partnership between WWE and Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, they mentioned a key, a key player that played a hand in getting this negotiation had, and this person is someone you guys know. He is the son-in-law of Antonio Anoki, his uh, Simon Anoki. Now, don't forget, Simon Anoki has been a key figure when it comes to wrestlers coming from Japan. Now, there were those who thought that he was involved in that whole shenanigans with All Japan, but needless to say, it wasn't him. But they're saying that he was one of the key play a key player involved in this one. So I wouldn't be surprised if he is one of those people that would be making their way towards, um, you know, towards uh, the special announcement this coming Sunday. But you may never know. But we'll see. Um, Natsupoi has uh, told that she reunites with her old mentor, uh, Yumiko Hota, and they will be teaming up for the upcoming um, Goku Aku uh, Festival. Uh, yes, uh, but some of you may question if you guys remember I talked about that Yuna Manaze was the one who trained her. Uh, yes, uh, there have been many wrestlers that have been trained more by more than one uh, mentor. Uh, Yuna Manaze is one of them. And so is a Yumiko Hota. So that would make perfect sense. Uh, Undertaker had some interesting things to say about Tony Khan. Um, let me pull that up real quick for all of you. So we can get that out of the way. Sorry, I have everything on my phone here. Oh, yeah, this is what he had to say. Uh, I don't think there is a real, a really true leader in the locker room. I have nothing against the man, but I don't know if he, he, if Tony, is the guy to run the company. His heart is in a good place, and he wants to do something, but I don't know if he has the acumen to run a wrestling company against a juggernaut that is WWE. I could be wrong. So, basically, he has like one of those doubts. I mean. He's not sure if he can, if he's the right guy for the job, but he knows that the dude loves pro wrestling, and and there's that. So we'll see. Now, as you all know, uh, recently we've been here. We just saw that Io Sky will be making her way to Japan next month. Um, Dave Meltzer talked about this, and he said th this about who will be going to the spending the entire summer with uh, Marigold. So this is what he had to say. It's only Io Sky. I I had heard earlier in this week that the that there might be people coming from WWE to the show, but as far as Mighty Gold people know, it's only Io. The ba the basic battle plan for Mighty Gold is four big shows a year. You know, like uh, arenas like Sumo Hall, and those are the shows that they would like to get WWE talent. 
You know her, Kyrie Sane, the ones that Rossi gets along with. Asuka, no. Asuka hates Rossi, so she'll never go there. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been hearing that about Asuka, you know, that she doesn't like Rossi, and, and, and I don't blame her, you know. But, yeah, so, so that's what they're saying. They're saying that who else is going to be going to Mighty Go? We just don't know about that. So we'll just wait and see until then. But uh, that's pretty much it what we have for our news updates. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. Uh, as you know, we have Against All Odds by TNA. I'm not 100% sure if I'll be able to see it due to the time, the, the time that I have because... I'm already made a priority every Friday when it comes to uh, AW Rampage and, of course, um, NXT Level Up. The reason is behind that is because by the time I actually, um, how do I say this? Uh, the following day, I'll be going to, of course, to my regular day job. I go back to work again, and it takes a bit of my time, and... I'm going to try to release the next video earlier as possible. But um, I'm not making any promises. But this is the best I will do as possible. So we'll see what happens until then. But for right now, we'll just end things as it is. And I will see you guys on the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.